Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with realism overhaul. For this video I decided to add test light as well as crash. So crash is the simulating thing. I haven't touched any of the configuration thingamajigs. Um, we'll just go with normal. Uh, maybe I should do hard because I'm in hard mode in theory. So okay we'll, we'll go with the hard preset. I don't know I haven't used Crash before, so I don't know which one is best. So we'll just leave that be. And I'll probably try and simulate once or twice just to check that it's working. But in general, I won't be using the simulating function. Uh, so test flight or test light. I don't actually know how test light works because I haven't used that before either. Uh, but I put test flight configurations on my... Uh, Sure start engine pack as well as the small rockets pack engines and it seems like it's got a test light thing here so we may be good to go on that we will see how it works um, i guess i should pick up some contracts first though huh so this is more about testing the compatibility of mods with the thing but of course i'll continue doing the rp2000 stuff achieve geostationary orbit Oh, that's not too bad an idea. I want more commsats, and of course geostationary commsats are good. So let's pick that up. And we want the highest possible orbit. Well, this is another geostationary. I think, well, this is in... <laughs> Why does it have to be retrograde? <laughs> 180 degrees, really? I don't know how to change that contract. Uh, to limit the inclination range so that it would only go the right way around. Mm, I don't think I want to do that one. Uh, so maybe this this one doesn't pay very well though. We could always do lunar contracts again, but I don't want that. And Mars flyby and Venus flyby, I think with our antennae are probably too much. Now, in the previous video, I think I'll just pick up uh, this one for now. In the previous video, I discovered that the pods were mispriced, and I have repriced them, and I'll probably put an update to RP2000 with both the test flight, uh, test flight slash test light configurations, as well as the pod readjustments soon. Uh, that seems okay, um, I think, yeah. That seems to be right. That seems to be about the right price. The Mark 1 pod is uh, much cheaper than the Mark 3, uh, Mark 1-3 command pod, so note that. Uh, generally, it scales pretty heavily to how many people are on board. So this uh, crew capacity too scales to the crew capacity and how physically big the pod is. So yeah, the advanced command pod here is like that and it is priced so and I think the lander cans are also priced so the stock command pods should be good and I haven't made uh, new command pods myself I do intend to have my own little command pod and station parts pack for this but I haven't made that yet the current state of all the mods in this install will be in the video description so there'll be a mod list there with the correct versions just so you can refer to it. So, I don't think we need to change the delta much, but maybe with regard to test flight, we might need to... or test light. <laughs> I need to remember it's test light, though I haven't uh, used it before. Um, full burn failure rate 2.5% because we haven't gotten any data units on the Skyforce engines here. So now we've got a possibility of failure there in 3% on the ether engine. Eventually, the failure rate will be much less, but I guess we'll go with it. I mean, it's not that expensive. Um, this is our sort of go-to rocket right now. And how about this little guy? This one has a 1.5% failure rate because it is just a tiny little 100 Newton thruster, hopefully. Hopefully, that's not too bad. The RCS does not have any... Uh, failure configuration. This has a long rated burn time, uh, an hour, so you can use it endlessly. Basically, uh, the 
the Aeon engine, I mean, there should be something like you could refuel it and keep reusing it kind of thing. Um, the Aeon engine here has a six minute, uh, sorry, a four minute? Why is that? I might need to check that out. I think there might be something wrong. Why is it an Aeon? It's supposed to be Ether. Uh, okay. Yeah, so there's apparently a problem with the small rockets thing where it reads this uh, configuration as being called Aeon instead of Ether. Aeon engine is the lower stage engine, which of course would have a four minute burn time, but uh, I mean, at max. But the Ether engine should have more than that. Okay, we will have to replace that configuration. Uh, this one has a four minute. I, I didn't do anything because of course we don't know too much about these engines. Uh, they haven't been used a hundred times or anything like that. I just uh, did sort of flat rates on the burn times and very simple things with the uh, configurations for test test light. So test light slash test light. The same configurations work for both. If you prefer test flight and it still works in this version, then you can use that too. Okay, so it looks like I'll need to change the ether engine though. So let me restart the game with that change. Okay, good thing we don't have too many mods in, so it's pretty quick to restart this. Now it's got the Ether configuration and a 20 minute maximum rated burn time. Well, rated burn time. Uh, rated burn time is a complicated uh, subject, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. So I don't think we're in the deterministic mode. I read through the test, test light forum discussion, and it does... There was a point where they were talking about potential issues it has with Crash. I hope they've resolved that. Um, but yeah, there is a deterministic mode for the rated burn time with test light, and I wouldn't recommend that. So just uh, note, I don't think that that's necessarily how engines work. So we'll leave it at that. Anyway, so let's try. Let's try simulating this. Why not? Um, launch pad, sure, sim setup cost is, is more, I mean, more than I would like. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you won't want, uh, hard mode on this, uh, crash thing, but I'll, I'll, since I'm only doing once or twice to see that it works, it's fine. I don't know if it gives us data units or not for the engines. If it does, then it might be worth the cost. So, testing of crash here, in theory. Well, uh, sim costs, whoa, it, it's, it, they, they pile up, don't, huh, okay, wow, geez. Um, all right, ignition, and launch. I'll just use smart ASS here. Um, this is gonna cost more than the actual rocket, though. <laughs> um, so here we don't see the data units. I don't know where we see the data units with test light. I also don't know how to end the simulation. We're trapped in a simulation now. Okay, well, um let's term uh, settings. Oh, that's just that kind of settings. Terminate simulation. Yes. Okay. I'll have to review the video to see what it actually charges us in the bottom corner. Uh, you can check that it charged us to 866 or whatever it was. Now, uh, do we have any data units on these? No. No data units. So, I don't know if you want to use Crash Fine, maybe you should do it in easy mode or something. Something that I don't know what configuration we want for Crash, so. Because I never use it. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, you can take a look at that and make suggestions if you think that it should be a standard crash configuration for RP2000 or something like that. But I think we should just go ahead and I think we have the Delta V to get into a proper geostationary orbit. And that is the first thing that we're going to try to do. So, okay. Let's launch. Or, sorry, I forgot about Kerbal Construction Time. So many mods. Okay, launch. 
Okay, we just have to make sure that once we finalize our geostationary orbit, and it looks like it can be any geostationary orbit, that it is in a useful location. I think the Indian Ocean is probably better than anything, but, but I, maybe we'll put our first one directly over the Atlantic and then maybe our second one over the Indian Ocean. Yep, we'll see. Okay, so throttle up, SAS on, and I'll, I, I don't know, I wish, oh, there, there is a failure right here. Okay, collect, it has collected data, okay. Maybe it didn't have that during the simulation mode, or I just didn't see that. Okay, so we'll pay attention to collect the data there. And ignition. They seem to be both ignited. And launch. Yet another Delta rocket. Our Electron. The ability of this rocket to deal with a single engine failure is minimal, so... There is that flaw here now. Test flight had its own dialogue with the engine situation. I guess this is the only way we get to see it with test light, but it says that test light causes less lag, so maybe it's for the best. But to be really sure that it's working properly, we have to have it kill one of our engines, <laughs> right? That That's when we'll know. Oh, this is pretty high. I forgot we need to turn more aggressively with this. RCS prepared. And separation. And ignition. And fairing separation, that's fine. Okay, Skyforce is gone. Ether is on. And we are collecting data. Slowly. We're collecting data very slowly. During Fizz Warp, the plume looks like it's in the right place. Let's get the antennae and solar panels out. Technically, we didn't need all the instruments in there. But they don't cost a whole lot, mercifully. Realism overhaul thermometers are not stock thermometers in terms of cost. Okay, we're going so high, I need to pitch down here. It's still going out of whack. That's fine. We have a periapsis wear over there. Uh, that might be okay, considering the rotation of... Well, we can always get to the right place, it's fine. We'll burn at that periapsis, if we have comms. We have comms through the moon. Oh, no, we've got a place here. Um, I'll retrograde. Oh, 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 I went too far. Uh... Oh, wait. Okay, we just got comms through that location, so this should be good through the burn. Okay, continuing. Sounds like we have a good ignition this time. Hopefully this is relatively equatorial, and our apoapsis will be relatively equatorial. Looks like it. Uh, we will have a junk stage in orbit, though. Yep. Alright, well anyway, on to the next stage. And this too has a test light configuration, but its chance of failure is fairly low. Which probably just means it'll get you when you're least expecting it. Okay, shut down. That's a good geostationary apoapsis. And we'll do the inclination adjustment up top too. Keep an eye on the electric charge. Okay, well this will put us over to Pacific if we stop here now. So I think we'll wait. Well, this turns out to be an Indian Ocean possibility. Which is not a bad idea. So I think... 
I think we'll give this a go. Can't plot any maneuvers yet. Okay, we don't really want prograde. We want something between prograde and north. I can't believe I'm successfully using nitrogen thrusters that have one newton. <laughs> and what was it in terms of ISP? 82. Okay, well, here we go with ignition. Can't have the advanced orbital info here either. That looking like we need more inclination or more prograde. If we did not start out at the equator at this apoapsis, then we won't be able to get below 3 degrees from here. Might be a little bit south of the equator maybe? I don't know, it's pretty close. On the bright side, we'll still have fuel to correct things. Our eccentricity is below 0.1. Oh, uh, we're going away from where we need to be. I don't know, it looks really equatorial. I actually need to take a look at a world map and see where the equator is. Okay, it looks like we're a little bit south of the equator, judging from Africa. We should be like around here-ish. So there we're south of the equator. I can't really see the nighttime side very well. I think around here-ish we're pretty... We have to figure out where we want to... Where we're crossing the equator and where we want to tilt our orbit. It seems like around here we're crossing above the equator. Borneo is right at the equator. Hmm, we're still south of it there. So maybe further on, because our orbit keeps going up, 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 up. We'll try around here and then we'll point south. Yeah, right now, as the world has turned, we are even further south here. Might be that we should be further along too. Would that descending node indicate anything? I'm not sure. Seem to be pretty in line with the equator at South America, which is opposite from us right now. Oh, there we go. Inclination below three degrees. Okay, so now we just need to bring our apoapsis down. And we are over the Indian Ocean with this. So you might rename it that. Yep, I'm gonna rename it right now. We have to get the well the core is built into the CubeSat unit, so Rename vessel. This will be Indian Ocean Geo. Or maybe I should put Geo in front. Relay. Okay. It's all nice and configured. Okay. I just need the right period. And what we're going for is 35,780. Oh, too much. 35,786 should give us the right period. I'm surprised it's off right now. I mean, it's that close. I would think that we were already within 23 hours, 56 minutes-ish. We have 36 ignitions left. We've only collected like 88 data units on this though, because its rated burn time is so long. Okay. okay, there we go. We've achieved geostationary orbit. Yay! Okay, now let's have a point at the sun. Pretty much used everything this thing got. I mean, we've got some station keeping fuel or whatever. If they give us another contract, we'll put it over the At uh, Atlantic, would be good. And then last one over to Pacific. Okay. And then we'll have persistent rotation handle it. So we can turn that off, SAS on. Persistent rotation needs SAS, and we want reference sun. Okay, so I see no reason at all to change our delta. We are going to try and launch it into the prescribed orbit for the second contract, which is lower than the geosynchronous one. I mean, we could cut down on cost because we don't need as much delta V, but yeah, this is simpler. Let's just go with it and see how it goes. Okay, let's 
we do have to actually line up with the intended orbit. Well, we might do well to boost up a little bit before correcting the inclination. Maybe it will take quite a lot because of the inclination thing. Um, we want to be at... Actually, pretty close to this location would be good. So that we cross the descending node sort of optimally. Uh, we might have wanted to be over here a bit, right between the ascending and descending node. Yeah, let's just go. <laughs> Throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. Oh, oh, we got ignition failure on the Skyforce. Shut down. And there is only one ignition on the sea level Sky Forces, so... Alright, roll the sucker back. Cover active vessel. All right, test light works, I guess. Okay, so now that I've rolled it back, if I roll it out again, is it going to still have the missing ignition? Let's just check. I mean, this is just a curiosity thing. Let's just check that if we roll it out again, we're still missing that ignition. And then we'll have to see whether bringing it back into the VAB and then just saving edits or something like that restores the ignition or whether we have to change the engine or something. Okay, this is just uh, checking on the ignition count here. Yeah, the ignitions are still gone on both of them. All right. Okay, here we are editing the rocket and in here, ground support clamps. Hold on. Uh, what does it mean ground support clamps when it says ignition rem ignitions remaining? Let me just take those off and let's say I get some new uh, Skyforce engines. Do they say ground support clamps? A weird way of referring to how many ignitions are remaining. Now it says ignitions remaining one. Here it says ignitions remaining ground support clamps. I'm not going to trust the ground support clamps. <laughs> uh, apparently it doesn't take too long to edit it when you just put the same engines on though, so... In fact, it doesn't cost anything at all. Okay, still really one ignition, right? Okay, save edits. Double check that we have one ignition remaining on both of them. Timing wise, basically in the same general location, uh, but this is the wrong side. We want to be on the other side. Okay, this should do. Let's try again. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. We got two engines and launch. Okay, past the speed of sound and everything. No apparent problems. We could sort of toss it high and then do the upper stage burn closer to that descending node. Well, if this stage could get us that far, I doubt it. Ignition failure rate is now 1.95%. That presumably at launch. And high G forces. And separation and ignition and fairing separation as well. Ignition failure rate on this engine only went from 2.5 to 2.48 though, I think, because of its long burn time, long possible burn time. So it'll be a 15 degree inclination that we have to fix from Cape Canaveral, which is at, oops, at 28 degrees. We need to get to basically 14 degrees. And I'm letting the apoapsis go up deliberately so that it'll cost less to ch change the inclination and we need to get to 900 kilometers anyway. Right? Uh, 905, so we overdid it a little bit, but... Okay, so we'll be a little bit higher over here where we want to do the inclination change, though not... We would like our apoapsis over there, but... Can't have everything. And here we go. 
Actually, more up, uh, more north. Mainly wants to go north, not prograde. Pull the apoapsis down and the periapsis up would be good. Adding a little bit of radial to it just to waste even more fuel. One degree... Oh, that's that stage. I guess we'll stick to one degree difference. I don't know if it's going to be any pickier than that. We'll see. So from here, we'll boost up the periapsis and see how picky it is. All right, another spent stage. We're going to have a lot of these, just that particular stage. Usually the contracts aren't that picky, but maybe this one will be. Will we have comms? Yeah, that Australia line. No, I don't know. Usually Australia is good for comms for a while. I think our geostationary satellite will still be good. Yeah. Is that good enough? It is not. It's not satisfied by that. Okay, so it's going to be pickier than that. Right. Okay, well now it says zero there for the inclination. We just need to bring that apoapsis down. Lots of delta V. Oh, it's satisfied with that. Okay, so we've got that done. We just need to maintain stability there. All right, so that satellite contract is fulfilled. Let's have it point at the sun and everything. And maybe next time we'll try something else out, but at least we have expanded the capabilities of RP-2000 to encompass test light and potentially crash. So that the crash configuration is debatable which one we should be using. But yes, as this turns around, I'll wrap it up and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.